Hey guys, what's up? It's Chase Jarvis, founder and CEO of Creative Live. You all know that we have more than 2,000 classes and more than 10,000 hours of learning, inspirational, and motivational content on the platform. I'm super excited to announce a new experience on Creative Live. It's called Fast Class. You've told us that you're busy and sometimes it's hard to dive into a full class from start to finish. So essentially we're now giving you a shortened highlight version of our top Creative Live classes. You can always dive into the full class with five, 10 or 15 hours of great content. But now if you're just looking to focus on a few of the highlights or wanna be able to skip quickly to something that really interests you, you can now get a shortened fast class version of that class. We're also thinking this might be able to help you explore a new craft and save time while doing it. This is a great tool to curate your learning experience to help create the life that you seek. So you're probably thinking, great, how do I access this new experience on Creative Live? That's easy. All you have to do is be a subscriber to the Creator Pass, and then all this is yours. If you're feeling isolated and looking for creative connection, Try tuning into creativelive.com slash TV. That's where we've got a 24 seven live stream from the kitchen counters. I can do that back lit shot that I really like to do. From the studios and living rooms of many of the world's top creators where we're doing musical performances, Q and A's, cooking shows, virtual book tour events, drawing, spoken word poetry, and more. Life passed me by waiting for an invitation when the world is greater than my nation or my occupation. Be someone you've never been. You feel all that adrenaline? It's medicine. It actually helps me feel like my days are more purposeful. I hope that out of this deep pain will come some collective growth. Dive into Creative Live TV today. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Creative Live. Welcome back to Creative Live TV. This is our brand new live stream where we are taking you to the homes, the kitchens, the living rooms of some of the top creators, whether they are Grammy winning musicians, Emmy Award winning filmmakers, National Geographic photographers, uh, all from our living rooms to yours uh, during these COVID times. My name is Kenna Klosterman, and I am your host. And and we just had an amazing performance by Citizen Cope uh, with our founder and CEO, Chase Jarvis. Uh, incredible conversation as well. And now we are going to move into the world of dance. And so I am thrilled and honored uh, to have on today Jacob Jonas. Jacob is the uh, choreographer. He is the mind behind Jacob Jonas, the company, where he is the creative director, artistic director, and um, he has been named one of the 25, uh, let me see, 25 to watch by Dance Magazine, uh, Best New Force in LA Dance by LA Weekly. His works have been performed everywhere at the top places all over the country from the Annenberg Center, uh, where they were a company in residence, to the Lincoln Center, the Kennedy Center. And uh, he has even collaborated with people like Kanye West. So Jacob, we are thrilled to have you here and to connect in the world of dance and uh, some Something that a lot of people are trying to move while they are at home. So welcome to Creative Live. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here and um, big fans of Creative Live and all the work that you guys are doing. So very excited to be a part of this uh, um, initiative that you guys are doing. Well, let's talk a little bit about, uh, let's just give, give people a little bit about your history and um, founding your company and sort of what it is that you do, because you're not the traditional sort of dance company. Yeah, our company, we look 
um, at ourselves kind of like a production company. So we do create works for the stage, um, hour and a half to two hour long uh, works that we tour around in big performing arts venues. But as our company was starting, um, I was 21 when I started it uh, six years ago. And as we were starting, we were also tapping into what was happening online with social media and, um, you know, found this really unique way to connect with audiences and um, supporters alike that were younger um, through digital platforms. So we took upon visual literacy to tell stories in new ways, not just performing on the stage. And um, we also look at ourselves like a production company and we partner with brands, we partner with music artists, we partner with, um, you know, production companies, directors to tell stories visually um, with clients and, and brands. So um, we, we spread ourselves in a lot of different directions with the same mission to just make dance more accessible and make, you know, important work. I think that you're one of the biggest young champions of dance out there. And I know I, I had you on our podcast, We Are Photographers, because you're also a photographer. Uh, and I just, it's incredible the uh, dedication that you have to to really bringing dance, to elevating dance uh, to a level that you know, a lot of people don't look at it in a similar way when they are young, especially. So um, it's just, it's truly incredible work that you do from films to educating uh, and, and so many other things. So one of the things that I was really excited about when I saw what, well, let me take a step back. Where are we joining you from? I know you're in Los Angeles. Let me check in at the time uh, that we are recording this. Obviously, we are all um, quarantined at home. You're sheltering in place. So how are you doing? How are your loved ones doing? Uh, tell us about where you are. Um, we're really grateful, honestly. Um, everyone's healthy. Everyone I know is healthy. Um, we're in Los Angeles. We've been taking this very seriously, this whole quarantine. Um, I have Crohn's disease, so I'm immunosuppressed. So um, the second this became a pandemic, uh, I was immediately quarantined and wasn't going outside. Um, part of my company, there's five of us together that are all quarantined together. So I guess that's called a pod when you are all together. Um, so we're sharing two different apartments and um, just kind of going through this process together. So if we actually cut to, there's another clip um, we can cut to, to our dancers, they're outside. Uh, warming up right now, we're going to be showing you guys a little choreographic process that uh, we can go through. Um, so we'll be doing that later. But um, but yeah, we're we're all just together. So I'm in my apartment right now, and they're outside in the garage space uh, warming up. And we're going to show you guys um, a unique look into our choreographic process um, later on. Very cool. And I think, um, thank you for, uh, you know, like you said, you're fortunate to have a pod, essentially your, your family that you are all together and, you know, roommates in the same building, uh, because a lot of people are, you know, experiencing things alone, but, um, just wanted to point out to people again, that, that, uh, mm -hmm. we, they are very much practicing social distancing. And in fact, that is the first thing that we wanted to talk about um, was the film that you have just released this week called A Social Distance. So tell us about this collaboration, the inspiration behind it. Yeah, so, um, you know, a lot of the work and efforts that we've done is really creating the sense of community online, digitally, and, um, you know, some of those fears started to emerge very quickly when, when Coachella closed, when the NBA shut down, um, that performances were going to be gone for a long time. And, um, and so my hat, my thinking hat went immediately to how do we stay connected digitally? How do we encourage people, you know, the people that are in leadership positions, how do we encourage them to motivate those that might start feeling down? And, um, so we started a few initiatives, a few that I'll speak to today. Um, one of them specifically is this film called A Social Distance. Um, my friend, um, an incredibly talented filmmaker, his name's Ivan Cash. He lives in San Francisco. And his work really touches upon a lot of different things in the arts um, and creativity. But mainly, I think his mission is really trying to identify human connection and um, how, how to encourage human connection more, especially in times of isolation in times of disconnection separate or even before COVID-19. But um, if you really look at his portfolio of work, it really speaks to this sense of um, disconnection. Um, and so we just got on the phone, we're brainstorming ideas and he had a few references, I had a few references of um, how to how to make a video uh, connecting people. So we immediately uh, drew upon this concept of making about 
you know, 20 different tasks for people at home to do, which includes showing us your refrigerator, um, taking a video out your window, doing some physical tasks with movement. And then we called upon um, a select group of dancers, a select group of like content creators who like operate drones or do things like that. Um, everyday people and then also musicians. And um, when I worked with Kanye West recently, um, one of the composers that was involved was a man named Steve Hackman, who's really talented. And um, he ended up composing a piece from scratch, printing out the sheet music. And then we sent that sheet music to many musicians around the world. And they played their select instrument um, to the composition. And then Steve got all the music and composed uh, using the material he had. And um, yeah, we made this film. It has over 100 participants, over 30 countries. Um, and we just really wanted to speak to the fact that we're all going through the same thing together and um, we're all in it together. And this was just like a visual rep representation of um, telling a story through these times. Well, it's absolutely stunning. What a huge project to take on. And I'm super thrilled that we get to play it for our audience right now. So Adam, let's roll the video. Hello, my name is Zipong and I'm from China. Hi, I'm Luisa from Italy. My name is Marcel Ndiaye and I'm from France. I'm from Iran. I live in New York City. And I'm from Barcelona. And this is my cat, Louis. My name is James. I'm from Australia. I'm from Ghana. I'm from Brazil. I am from Malaysia. <laughs> and I'm from India. And the COVID-19 lockdown is making me feel pretty stressed out. I feel overwhelmed. Uncertain. Isolated. And I feel unbalanced. Powerless. Detached. Feeling a little bit anxious. I feel uh, scared, but hopeful. hopeful. I'm feeling optimistic. optimistic. I'm feeling resilient and determined. And I feel calm. I am happy. <laughs> and hope you guys feel good too. Take care. I'm sitting here applauding. <laughs> Jacob, how long did it take from start to finish to put this together? I mean, it's what an endeavor. You saw the list of people who participated. Like, how, how did you do this? We had a really great team. Um, 
Ivan and I co co directed it, and then uh, my partner Jill produced it, and um, Louis from Ivan's team. The four of us kind of were in the initial um, conversations, but in total, it took us four weeks from start to finish. Um, but yeah, there's like a whole incredible team of, of people helping out voluntarily. Um, and we had this great editor, um, Blake, um, and he had a whole team of a graphic designer, assistant editor. We had a composer, sound mixer. Um, we had a lot of people involved um, and together we just made made this project happen very quickly. The the 93 year old uh, grandma from Malaysia just warms my heart. I've watched this like 10 times already. And then like the getting people together, well, you can't really see it, but the, <laughs> I mean, there's just so many details um, that truly bring joy. And I think that that's what is so needed right now for people. And I think joy is different from happiness, but like you just, you touch so many people who participated, but also then uh, get to view it as well. And what I think is really interesting is that you started this. I mean, if it's, if you're just releasing it now, it took four weeks to make, and we're, we're starting to see more of these uh, performances by bigger brands where, or, you know, the Hamilton on some good news or, you know, things that, that you guys did this I don't want to say you were you were early, you were early on. Um, so, what does that mean to you to kind of have have been one of the innovators and in doing something like this? I think you know we were on hold for a couple of really big projects right before the shutdown happened, and you know to think about just productions in general, how much money goes into these pr these productions and these sets, and to think that all creativity right now is really stopped for a short period of time. Um, you know, the only way to continue making content is to have crowdsourced material and um, to ask people to help make that content for you. Um, so I think we're going to start to see a lot of it. We're already starting to see a lot of it. The, the goal for us wasn't to be a competitor. It was just we had an idea initially and we just wanted to make it come to life. Um, but it felt really nice and organic that we didn't have any funding from a brand or a sponsor, that we weren't doing it for anybody, that we weren't on the timeline or schedule or budget of anybody else. We just, you know, everybody really did do it voluntarily. So the intention behind it feels very pure. Um, so yeah, it's, it's interesting to see, um, I think a lot, you're going to start to see a lot more, um, projects that come out like this that depend on the crowdsource material, um, but it felt it felt really nice. Um, just the idea of connection, like there's a trumpet player in there. And, you know, before this started heavily impacting the U.S., it was it was impacting Italy um, pretty, pretty hard. And we all started to see some of those videos go viral of the artists in Italy playing off their balconies. And one of them was this trumpet player um, playing Imagine by the Beatles. And um, I ended up reaching out to him and he's involved in this project. So that sense of like connection around the world feels really cool that um you know, I, I think the energy of it is just what, what excited us most and nothing else. Yeah. And I, I think that, yeah, you just, you feel that. Um, so I want to kind of switch to, because I know we have our, our dancers on hold. And if you're just tuning in right now, I'm here with Jacob Jonas. He is the artistic director, the choreographer uh, behind Jacob Jonas, the company. And uh, he is social distancing. He is quarantining from L.A. where he has his pod uh, of uh, his partner, Jill, and um, some other roommates and dancers who are in the same space. And so we have the opportunity to bring them all to you, which is amazing. And so in addition to the film that you uh, helped collaborate on and, and helped direct and create, you're also launched uh, something called hashtag a digital dance. And of course, uh, we've been seeing as well, so many people uh, putting, putting ways out there for people to connect. And it was when I saw a digital dance that I reached out to you and said, you know, I would love to help get the word out about what, what you're creating. Cause it, it, it's again, the lines of connection, digital, everyone being in it together. So Tell us what a digital dance is and, and why you guys started it. Yeah, so around the same time as all this was happening in the dance community specifically, we fostered this very unique community of people that support our work online and that we've worked with partners in, 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 the, in the medium of dance that we've worked with um, to try to make the art form of dance more visible. And so when um, 
you know, when this was all unfolding, um, I reached out to a few people who were like, hey, let's make something happen. Um, let me know if you're interested. And I sent out like three different Instagram groups of like 20 people and everyone, like 60 people all just said, yeah, let's go for it. Um, all really prestigious choreographers, dance companies, people in the field. And um, it was just to motivate people to still stay creative, even though they won't be in their dance studios um, and just kind of have some stay at home tasks. So I made the first one and uh, my team is kind of behind all the um, production elements of it, making the assets, sending it out. And then we have like this cultural community of people that are helping give tasks and create them, give content. Um, so yeah, the first one we did, um, yeah, everyone is like a different physical task and it encourages people to do things differently. So to date we've done 11 of them and we, we, we launch it in the beginning it was every Monday and Friday, but we just changed it to every Monday and we have people, um, from around the world, Martha Graham, um, Paul Taylor, Kyle Abraham, um, the Seven Fingers in Montreal, um, Damien Gillet, a choreographer in Europe, some really exciting um, choreographers that are involved. Um, so yeah, we, we, we just launch a different task every every uh, week and just encourage people to do it, post it to the hashtag, it unites everyone, everyone gets to see what everybody else is doing and um, kind of ups the game and keeps people creative at home. And I, and I think that the cool thing is like, I'm not a dancer <laughs> per se, and yet I can look at these and think about the tasks. And although I've, I have yet to actually send one in, so maybe I need to commit to that, Jacob, but um, these are not just for, um, you know, people who are performers or what have you, you'll, you'll see the prompts from those people, but you know, you can be anybody out there uh, participating in it. Tell us again what the, the hashtag and the, or where people can go to see the tasks. It's hashtag a digital dance. And we also made a Instagram account called a digital dance as well. And, um, and the highlights and the story highlights um, is each task. So you can see each task and, not, you don't have to do any of them. You don't have to do every one. Um, you can just do one of them. Um, you could even do them and then not post it. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just a, a way to encourage people to be physically creative. So let's actually, I know you have a highlight reel that's just a quick 60 second highlight reel of digital dance. So let's roll that for people so they get even a, a better idea about what, what you're creating for people out there. Cool. The essential of dance is not in words, but is in movement. Now that movement is embodied in each one of us. You traverse, you come to the light, you work, you make it right, you embody within yourself as much curiosity, you use that curiosity, that avidity for life, no matter whether it's for evil or for good. And the body becomes a sacred garment, which is yours first, and it is your last garment. And as such, it should be treated with honor and with joy and with fear, too, but always with blessing. Again, what a beautiful concept of seeing people performing these tasks, whether it's in their garages, out in the woods by themselves, in their kitchens, in the car even. I just, it's its really amazing and inspiring. Um, so let's talk about some of those tasks and how, you know, how people, what they were and how people are approaching them just so we get an, an idea for people who are watching who want to participate. For sure, yeah. If we can show some of the slides. Um, the first task that we made, um, the direction was interpret the written movement directions on the next story in order from one to 15 to create your own phrase using your own movement, um, ability, location, and creativity. You can interpret the directions in many different ways. And then if you can see um, in this next thing, it says hip circle, right knee, um, gets pulled 
uh, jump to opposite direction, left shoulder cuts, three angular movements, step one, two. So these are just kind of choreographic tools that I personally use in a creative process. And we'll be able to show you guys a little bit more of that um, with our dancers. Um, but yeah, it's just a fun um, exercise for you to interpret tasks and utilize your creativity, um, both just physically as a mover, but also compositionally, if you're a photographer, if you're a filmmaker, um, to try to use the backdrops, to try to use your geography, to try to use the location and, and edit them in different ways. So this was just kind of the first introduction one. And then that was one that I made. And then the next ones that we've done were by different choreographers. So this was task one. Task five, um, this was by Alicia Graf Mack, who um, is one of the most extraordinary dancers. She's worked with Alvin Ailey, with Dance Theater of Harlem. She just recently became the director of dance at Juilliard, um, where she's an educator. Um, and she created a task saying, play with the idea of perspective and put the camera wherever you'd like and play with the idea of perspective um, with no specific physical um, directions like mine was. Um, and people you know, came up with some really unique concepts as well. Um, and then here's another example as well. Um, task seven, uh, the seven fingers is a circus company and in circus arts, you're, you're, you normally master one skill using an apparatus. So like the Chinese pole or hoop diving or, um, aerial silks or juggling. Um, but you, you tend to use a physical object to do that. Um, and so their task was for dancers to focus on an object and for circus artists to focus on movement. So kind of shifting, uh, the challenge for um, the artist, um, but the concept was when dance meets circus. So choose an object and see how it makes you move. And people used all different kinds of props from, you know, being in the kitchen, uh, using a pan to um, um, using um, a partner, um, keep the object in constant focus, roll with the object, toss the object, move the other object in the air. Um, catch it, bend with it, balance the object. So these are all just different cool prompts for people to play with. Um, and if you guys go to the hashtag again, you'll see a lot of these different concepts that were emerged. I think that's the fun part is to see them in action and see how how different people, in, like you said, interpret it. And And so you're a choreographer. So how do you approach that creative process? And I would love to sort of let's to see it in action in terms of whether it's you know you these tasks have been laid out um, in terms of uh, this project, but relate that back to the choreography process in general. Yeah. Um, well, you know, as a choreographer, there's so many different ways to make movement and. You know, at the end of the day, the audience is going to be sitting in the chair or watching a film, and there's no rule on how to make movement. And there's so many different concepts and um, tools um, in choreographic process. And um, in our process, we like to try to figure out as many ways to utilize the dancer's ability to the fullest while staying true to the narrative theme um, or abstractual theme to, to the work. And, um, you know, it was exciting even with you kind of having these conversations prior to doing this because... You know, it's easy for a musician to grab their guitar and kind of play some repertory and um, maybe for other mediums to express some of the work that they do. Whereas for us as dancers, we can't really share a produced work. Um, and so part of my insight into this was how do we maybe share an insight to our work um, without it being a fully produced work, um, but more about the process. So we have um, dancers from our company, uh, if we want to just cut to the next slide, um, that are set up. Um, in a separate location, um, in a garage. Um, and these dancers, uh, the guy waving his hand, his name is Mike Tyus, and he's our rehearsal director um, for the company, a very skilled um, acrobat, circus artist, contemporary dancer. Um, Jill, who's in the middle, she's a partner um, of mine. She's a uh, founder of the company, um, a very skilled technician, uh, contemporary dancer, acrobat. And then Emma, who's on the left, um, is also a very skilled uh, technician and um, contemporary dancer. Um, what's really nice about our companies, in addition to them all being physical artists with us, they're also administrators too. So they, they see the skills of the marketing, the development, um, and they work with me closely to help um, kind of keep the company on the right track. So um, while they're all here, we can play with a few different concepts and then I'm going to show you a version of task one. But um, for Mike right now, um, I'm just going to give him a little task. Um, 
just playing with this idea that um, you're being pulled by your right shoulder. Um, just kind of be guided by your right shoulder and play with an improvisation of being pulled by the right shoulder. Nice. So that's one concept where we can just kind of focus on one isolated body part and an adjective behind the body part of how it can move. And then uh, Emma, if you don't mind coming out, a concept with her, I, I might say like, okay, um, Emma lay on the floor and uh, actually Jill, why don't you come out as well? So Emma lay on the floor and Jill stand up and um, why don't you guys just make 10 movements and Jill respond to the movements Emma's making. Or, sorry, just make five movements, five movements. So these are just different variations of Kind of choreographic process and so i rely on a lot of different tools to to create movement generate content sometimes it'll just be me and i'm physically moving and they're learning things that i'm doing on my body um, other times it's not like that um, and we play with different physical metaphors to give them ideas on how to make and generate content um, but what we'll do moving forward uh we'll just try to do task one and we might not get to all 15 but um, I just want to show you guys some variations of choreographic process. So the first task is hip hip circle. Um, and actually, well, or yeah, if you have a question, definitely well, do it. Jacob, I just wanted to interject and, and again, um, invite everybody who might be tuning in at home to, if you're sitting down, like get up right now, get up. This is not just for the dancers, but really wanting to encourage you to move and and just seeing between you know connecting you with an amazing choreographer so see how the how the dancers are interpreting what he's saying and this is this again we invite you to join this creative process so back and over to you and lastly i think in process too whether you're working with some of the most talented professional dancers or um or not I think everybody has this sense of judgment on themselves. And I think the best thing in a process is try to remove that idea of judgment and think about it more analytically. And so if you make something, don't worry about how your body looks. Um, don't worry about if you're doing it correctly. Just try to make sure that it feels good and you're trying to be as creative with your body. Um, and there's so many different ways to interpret these tasks. For example, if I ask Mike hip circle and I ask um, Emma hip circle, there's a lot of different variations to do the same thing. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna play with the same concept. Actually, Mike, while you're sitting on the floor, why don't you just stay on the floor? And um, Emma, why don't you maybe go on your knees? And then Jill, why don't you stay standing? And we're gonna we're gonna express the same concepts to them and watch how they interpret it differently. And then you guys at home, I hope you guys do the same thing. And then if you like what you make, hashtag it a digital dance and say task one. So here we go. So hip circle. Right knee up and jump to opposite direction. So we'll try it again for the from the top. So hip circle. Right knee up. Jump to opposite direction. Now how you remember these things will kind of become better as you do it over time. So it's not gonna, it'll, it'll take time for you to really let the muscle uh, memory kick in, but we're gonna just kind of speed this process up a little bit. Um, left shoulder cuts. Three angular movements. Cool. So we'll try it again. So from jump from jump to opposite direction. Left shoulder cuts. And three angular movements. Now, 
Nice. Okay, so let's try it from the top. We'll add both things together. So hip circle, right knee up, jump to opposite direction, left shoulder cuts, three angular movements, and adding on step one, two. Hips push forward. Uh, can you guys just give me a thumbs up if you can keep going or thumbs down if we should go back? Cool. Um, hips push forward, up, surrender, down. Cool. So let's just go back from left shoulder cuts and we'll, we'll keep going from there. So left shoulder cuts, three angular movements, step one, two, hips push forward, up, surrender, down, five steps in different directions. Rotate switch. So what's amazing about dancers is they have this real sense of um, athleticism um, that's paired with creativity, that's also paired with intellectual thinking. And I think oftentimes when you go watch a performance, you see a fully produced work and you kind of judge it for its artistic merit, but oftentimes watching the process is just as fulfilling for the viewer because you can really understand not just the knowledge that they have with their bodies, but also their intelligence. And oftentimes people ask me, you know, what's most fulfilling about working with a dancer? What are you looking for when working with a dancer? And, you know, the things that I often like to say most are when ego is removed completely so that the, the individual artist can facilitate the vision. Um, to the best of their ability, um, but also when creativity is matched um, with that. So that they're normally the person that stands in the back of the room, not in the front, but um, which shows a sense of humility and um, really wanting to make the overall picture be the best that it can be, but also ones that are very creative. And I think for me as a choreographer, one of the things that I need to do is really study the strengths of each person. So never do I look at a dancer and say, oh, they're not good. Um, it's just they might have more weaknesses than um, in some areas and more strengths in other areas. So as I start to really work with a dancer, I start to really understand their strengths. That's why for me, I like to work with dancers for three to five years rather than just for one, so that I could really understand what they bring to the table. Whereas some people might be um, really intellectual um, and I can give them a task, they can work on it for 30 minutes and they propose something that's very different, um, where others might really be able to look at my body and physicalize what I'm doing instinctually um, and really get the senses right. Some people are really strong musically. Some people are really great communicators, so they know how to work well partnering. Um, some people might have really great leadership skills. So if there's a problem on stage or if there's a problem in the studio, if someone's having a bad day, they might really be able to bring the best qualities out of the other person. Um, so it's really interesting working with dancers because you rely on them like paint um, for a canvas, but you're also dealing with human beings that have their own emotions and, um, you know, naturally they love to do what they do. They're never going to do it for the paycheck. Although money is nice, they never do it for anything, but for the fact that they have to do it. And so when that energy is kind of introduced, it really heightens the experience, um, and makes for like a family environment. Um, I'll just repeat these last things one more time as they've been reviewing it. Uh, we'll go from the top, um, hip circle, Right knee up, jump to opposite direction, left shoulder cuts, three angular movements, step one, two, hips push forward, up, surrender, down, five steps in different directions, 
rotate switch. Um, let's just end it. I'm going to cut three of the things out. Um, so rotate switch. Let's go. Um, 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 your head gets pulled up. And then drop. Cool. So that could be like a cool little ending. Uh, we'll give them maybe like another couple of minutes to review it. And then um, while they review it, um, I'm going to show it to you guys all individually. And then we'll do it all together. And I'll show you how much opportunity there is for me as a choreographer to make work happen. Um, normally, in a situation like this, I might have like six to eight hours in a typical rehearsal. So I can really polish it and, and digest it and think about ways for it to work. Um, and respond to the things that I'm looking for. But in this specific scenario, um, we'll just kind of demonstrate what we've done. And um, you can see how it looks like as an individual, as a soloist. And it can also be interesting to see um, how it interacts with as a group um, and the different exciting ways for the audience to view it. So we'll just kind of watch them as they review it. Yeah, if you have any questions during this time. Well, I was just going to say, if, if folks are just joining us right now, uh, we you might be watching us on creativelive.com slash TV. There's a chat button up there. You can join the conversation. Let us know where you're tuning in from. And you might be watching on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. Um, we are going inside the mind of artistic director, choreographer, uh, Jacob Jonas, and we're seeing how he in how he takes tasks and 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 the creative process behind working with dancers and i just having being somebody who is just will watch a performance it's just really awesome to get inside your mind and see how you're you're working with people but then also like a, you know go to like i don't even know what some of these you know when you say like right shoulder you know or i don't know they're just they're they're new terms for me so it's really really cool to experience that so throw it back over to you thank you yeah i mean for me like um you know growing up in dance as a street dancer um it was very much about the rawness and the explosivity to the kind of work that i was doing and then as i got into more classical styles of dance like ballet or modern there was a lot different um vocabulary that was utilized um you know, the ballet vocabulary um, or the modern vernacular, different um, kind of vocabularies that are very familiar to most dancers are beautiful. But, you know, for me growing up, you know, break dancing and flipping and using concrete, um, I always found it, I always found movements to resonate with me that were much more human um, rather than movements that were kind of an arabesque or things that were more familiar on a traditional stage. Um, so as I choreograph, I always try to find what are those human moments? What are those authentic moments? I never really worry about how a dancer, I'm never going to give them emotional feelings. Like I want you to feel this way or feel bright. I really just let the, um, the physical tasks speak for themselves and hope that the overall arc or narrative of the work tells the story I'm trying to convey. Um, but yeah, as we, as we cut back to the dancers, um, we can kind of just go through a demonstration quickly and then um, maybe open it up to some questions. Um, maybe Jill, are you ready to go first? Yeah, cool. So she's going to perform. They're all going to perform these things individually, and then we're going to perform it all together as a group. So here we go. Six, seven. Cool. Here we go, Mike. Five, six, seven, go. Great. And Emma? Six, seven, go.
Great. And we're going to try all three people together. Um, and this time, can you guys all just take a moment um, in the middle of it where you kind of just slow everything down um, together? So just respond off of each other somehow. Yep. Five, six, seven, go. Beautiful. Amazing, guys. <laughs> um, cool. So, yeah, that's just like a quick insight to our choreographic process and one way to play with um, choreographic tools. And, you know, it's funny with this sound cut off, you can't really hear their heavy breathing or anything, but there's so much that goes into the physicality and the athleticism of just maintaining a body to be able to do that day in and day out, um, but then also mix it with your profession, with the artistry. Um, with the injuries, with the kind of lifelong career that it takes to do it. And um, it's really cool too, when you think about productivity and you think about resourcefulness, um, our dancers, when they make content in the studio and we perform it for a stage, we use that content, but then also some of these dancers might be able to take that phrase, find a really interesting backdrop, like we're asking through these tasks and post it onto their own Instagram. And so we really encourage people to kind of build their own personal brand and following. And, you know, I think at the end of the day, that's what really inspires everybody is when you see other people's artistry being fully um, utilized to their, you know, to their fullest potential. Um, and so that's all we're trying to do is figure out ways for people to maximize that creativity. So, so beautiful. Again, like, from all over the internet, clapping, clapping, <laughs> and high fives. Um, it's it's just so beautiful to um, to be able to see. You know, I'm thinking about watching them in the garage and thinking, you know, right now you might be doing rehearsal on a stage. Um, and so, uh, what does it mean to you all? So again, thank you, thank you to to the dancers. Um, that was so amazing to be able to see um, that that. The improv level to me is what's is what's so cool. Like you guys just created that in this short period of time. So amazing. Um, what does it mean to be a dancer right now uh, in this time? I'd love to actually, if they don't mind coming towards the phone, yeah. and, uh, unmuting unmuting it. But I can just kind of answer quickly. Um, you know, I don't want to say anything that might be unreasonable, but, you know, based on some of the things that I've been hearing from medical professionals and based on what was happening in 1918 with the Spanish flu, a lot of the predictions that I've been hearing is that, you know, public gatherings and performances won't be able to take place until there's a vaccine, uh, which might be uh, eight to, you know, 16, 18 months. So knowing that people being in a theater might be the last thing people might be interested to do. Um, is a bit scary. I think our sound is starting. Maybe, guys, if you want to um, mute it still for a second. Yeah. Um, but yeah, knowing that public performances might be the last thing people might want to do psych psychologically is a little bit um, interesting to think about. I think, you know, dancers, artists around the world right now are thinking, when are they going to be back on stage? Um, but we all still get to look at it through an optimi uh, optimistic lens as well, rather than just a negative one and, and be grateful for the opportunities we have had and the, uh, the, the creativity that will never go away. And so we're all just trying to, you know, utilize a garage space or utilize, you know, uh, a phone or an Instagram account and, and, and make that the new stage rather than the traditional one until we have our regular stage back. Um, but yeah, I would love to open it up to the dancers and see if they have any responses too. Yeah, at the beginning, uh, hi, my name's Mike. At the beginning hi, um, of this kind of trial, trialing time, I was scared that uh, I would have to stop dancing. Um, and then I realized how essential it was in my life um, and how much it does inspire other people. So I've been incredibly encouraged um, from my friends and my family to continue pursuing being um, a creative um, and it's been, I think I've been more creative now <laughs> in this time of like limitation and restriction. Um, 
it's given me so much more opportunity to find ways to, you know, combat all the things that we can't do. I think that's a beautiful insight that right now people are even being able, even more creative in restraint. And, yeah. and I think that's sort of some of the heart of the creative process or the where creativity comes from is not really having access to, to things. And so this is kind of the ultimate, like not access. So I think yeah. it's inspiring to hear you speak that way. Yeah. How about the, the rest of you, Emma and Jill? Yeah, I think it's, and a really an important time to connect with um, artists from all around the world. And we're so fortunate that we can do that over social media and the internet and being with artists and friends who we can create with has been really helpful and one of the best parts about this. And I'm just really happy that we can come outside and dance and it doesn't have to be in a studio necessarily, even though in our minds that is the only place that we have been, you know, practicing that for a while, so it's nice to expand our artistry. Yeah, I love being able to connect with so many of the different dancers. I think one of my favorite things about a digital dance is being able to go through the hashtag and see how everybody interprets the movement. Um, it's different when you're like watching the process here, like in the studio, when you see oh, how is Mike circling his hips or how is Emma doing half, it's just kind of like a more uh, like posted final product and you'll see all the levels of creativity has been really inspiring for me to keep going out and creating and sharing and just being a to a And just... Just yeah. a reminder to folks um, who who might be watching and saying, "Wait, how how are you guys all together? Um, you guys have been super fortunate in, in having this little pod um, of living in the same space." And um, and so, has that been different for you uh, versus other people that, that your other dancers you're communicating with, you know, out in the world who who are by themselves? Um, I think it was a. At first, it was a tough decision. Um, my family wanted me to go home to Colorado Springs and be with them. Um, and I was, ner I was nervous to leave the state. And so making the decision to stay with this pod was a big one, but I'm so grateful that I did make that decision. Um, and I'm grateful I had people to be with. I know there are a lot of people that I'm talking to right now. A lot of my friends were stuck on cruise ships in the middle of the ocean and cabins by themselves, um, people who don't have roommates. Um, but we've been doing Zoom calls with people um, who are expressing interest in um, just sharing their story and their movement with us. So that's been highly encouraging. Yeah, I think being in the pod, we're really grateful to have each other creatively and also just socially to be able to like connect um, and talk with one another. And I think it's fun. I think that human connection really is, and that even though you might not be able to physically see someone, I think connecting through video is great. It's obviously not preferred, um, but really important to stay engaged with the people that you love, check in, and, and give them like create a task, even if they don't necessarily think they're creative, to just turn the brain to keep it Well, I love the the beauty of live is that uh, you got cars coming by and uh, yeah. <laughs> coming coming again. This is the real deal coming to you from uh, garages and and living rooms. Um, We're in a back alley. <laughs> okay, back alleys. Back coming to you from back alleys too, yeah. all over back the world. <laughs> there you go. It's a new name. Yeah. <laughs> Well, once again, thank you all um, for for joining us today and for sharing that that love and enthusiasm of dance and inspiring and encouraging people um, out there to participate in in a digital dance. You're all so talented, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, Jacob. Once again, I just kind of want to, as we kind of closing in on the end of this of our hour with you. Um, some inspiring words again for, for somebody like me who is not a dancer um, to, I don't know if it's getting over fears or just like, what can I, what can I be doing? Um, I don't know, at home or thinking about or final words, I guess. I think 
you know, something I think about a lot is just, um, you know, I went to go visit my grandmother the other day and she's been kind of locked up during this time. And, uh, her husband, my grandfather passed away, I think almost 10 years ago and it was her birthday. So she's reading cards, um, that my grandpa used to write her. And he always used to, in his signature, write in good health, say like in good health, love, you know, and I've been thinking about that a lot, this idea of health and what is it? What is mental health? What is physical health? What is emotional health? And I think, you know, whether this thing happened, this COVID-19 thing happened or it didn't, the idea of health is just kind of a sense of acceptance. And I think too often with physical health, people are so hard on themselves to reach a certain goal or lose a certain amount of weight or look a certain way physically. And I think the goal is just to make sure you're, you know, you're sweating and you're moving. Um, one of my closest friends who I look up to dearly, he's, he's always saying, just make sure you're moving, you know, be in the ocean, let the waves crash, you know, just make sure your body's moving, make sure your heart's moving, make sure your mind's moving. Um, just don't be still. Um, and I think in, in regards to physical health, I think that's the best advice I can give is just keep moving. You know, don't worry about how many pushups you're doing. Don't worry about how your body looks. Just just make sure you're moving because it feels good. And I think everything else will kind of fall into a place naturally. That's truly beautiful. And when you said that, like, I just had a vision of myself, like, keep your heart moving, like, like not like the way watching you all dance, like keep your chest moving, you know, not just like the heartbeat, but just that moving through, through space and the world. And it's a, a, a beautiful sentiment. Um, Jacob, thank you so much. Once again, uh, tell people how they can participate in a digital dance. And I can't wait to see um, the as people continue to, to be part of it. Yeah, we have, um, through our company, we have a few different Instagrams accounts. One is Jacob Jonas, the company. One is underscore JJTC. Um, one is uh, Cameras and Dancers. And um, this next one that we just started was a digital dance. And um, you can use the hashtag or the account and find ways to find the tasks, do the tasks at home, uh, post the tasks if you're feeling up to it. Um, it's definitely a platform of encouragement, not judgment. So no one's judging you on it. Um, they're just wanting to encourage you and share with you. Um, so that's really it. Um, just stay connected with us online. We'd love to stay connected with you and let's just keep making work during these times where it can feel uh, limiting, but uh, your creativity will never stop. So. Awesome. Well, going back to a, a social distance in, in isolation, we can still be connected. So thank you. Thank you for everything that you're doing and, and to all of you. All right, everyone, we're going to sign off for now, but we will um, see you next time here on Creative Live TV and um, get out there and move, move your heart, move your mind, move your body. Stay healthy, everyone. Thank you, Jacob and crew. Thank you and so Pod. much. Thank you. Thank you.